All right, guys, so this is my first iteration of a gust lock for a Cherokee 140, or I guess any other PA-28 that has the holes drilled in the uh, control rod or the control tube and a collar uh, on the column. So anyway, what I've done is I've taken a piece of steel rod and I've made my bend. I've made a, a circular little piece there out of a piece of steel. I um, welded it on the back side. And right now it's just painted silver because that's what I had. And I put a piece of shrink tubing right here to keep from scarring up the uh, any parts any more than I have to. And then I will eventually put, um, I think I'm going to paint this white anyway. The white just seems to stand out more against the black of the instrument panel. And um, I will wind up putting uh, red uh, lettering on there that says a uh, warning removed before flight or um, something of that nature. But anyway, it will just uh, sit down in the um, sit down on the column kind of like that. And then it'll be staring at you right in the face when you uh, sit in the pilot seat or when you open the door. You should be able to see it relatively easy. I think um, I'm going to leave here. I'm going to leave the shop. We'll head down to the airport and get in the airplane, uh, do a little test fit and see what it looks like. All right, let's uh, let's go get in the airplane, and we'll do a trial fit. See if what I made is going to work or not. It's a very, very foggy evening here in Hot Springs. As you can see, it is just soupy outside. I mean, you can't even see out. Uh, there's so much condensation on the windows of the Cherokee but anyway uh, here's what we got you know uh, the last video we talked about uh, the control lock or the lack of in a PA-28 and that we also talked that our particular airplane has uh, the drilled column and, and a collar and so you know here it is here's here's what we got here's what I've made and let's just check and see what kind of fit we get. I mean, that's pretty doggone easy. And I mean, we get just, I mean, a little play. So, I mean, if you look at the ailerons, that's about all of the play that we're getting. And if we look back at the stabilator, then, uh, there's zero movement at all on the stabilator, uh, none whatsoever. And, uh, you know, the neat thing about this is, and it's something that I hadn't planned for, this is, I mean, if you're sitting in the pilot seat looking at the instrument panel, I mean, this this is right in front of your face. And, you know, if you wanted to make sure that it's noticeable, um, like, uh, for example, if you had a club airplane or a, uh, or a trainer, then uh, you could also just kind of angle it so that when you come in the door opening, it's staring at you. Because you're really going to want to, you're going to want to take that thing off um, prior to pre-flight. So anyway, that's what I've come up with. That's what I got. Uh, I love it. I think it's uh, going to do exactly what I want it to do. This is a, kind of a rough uh, draft of it. Um, I'm going to, uh, you know, it's, it's made out of steel and I'm going to make it a little bit uh, cleaner, a little bit nicer. This was just a... Uh, trial run to see how it was going to look, how it was going to work, and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, I dig it. I put shrink tubing on it. I just kind of wanted to try to protect uh, as much as I could so it didn't scratch and scar up. Now, so let's just see by moving, see what, oh yeah, it's locked down. It's not moving at all. So that's great. Let's go to an aileron see what we get here we'll probably get a little movement on the other on just because i mean yeah we're, we get maybe a three quarters of an inch deflection either way but that's plenty uh, to plenty to, to do the trick to keep it from getting uh keep it from getting slammed around too bad so anyway that's uh, that's what we got